It's exactly two years since the onset of the pandemic. Interest rates are at the highest level since 2019, but buyers aren't backing off at all yet. Two years and the post-pandemic real estate market continues to surprise me. Let's take a look at this week's data and see the latest. Each week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country, all the pricing and supply and demand, and we analyze all those changes and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the CEO of Altos Research. Let's take a look at the data and see the details for the week of March 21, 2022. Available inventory of unsold single-family homes in the U.S. is basically unchanged from last week at 248,000 homes. That's actually down just a smidge and largely due to uh, some delayed new construction actually uh, removed from the, the metric here until it's complete. We could have a few weeks bumping along the bottom before inventory starts climbing reliably for the summer. Uh, I've labeled here at the left end of the chart uh, how normal times, back in normal times, inventory would be climbing very obviously by mid-March. And even in those weeks just prior to the pandemic, you can see the little dip here, um, you can see that it was already coming, but the official, you know, the, the pandemic was already coming, but the official lockdowns weren't in place yet. So in 2020, right there at the two years ago, the available inventory was 738,000 homes, basically three times that number that is available right now. In 2019, we were still dealing from the effects of a year of rising interest rates in the prior year. And so inventory was at 827,000. So, so week over week, inventory is starting to increase. We're flat this week. Um, and then now, this is all seasonal right now, and it's better than last year, starting earlier than last year, but shows no signs yet of any market slowing from rising interest rates. Assuming rates continue to rise, say, to maybe 4.5%, we could see the impact much, we would, it would be much later in the year, the second half of the year. This is a forecast model which uses 2018 as our guide for how rising rates should impact inventory. The dotted line here is 2022 with the projection for the rest of the year. We appear to be turning the corner now with our seasonal increase in inventory. So that's already an improvement over last year. The, then we can use the dark blue line up higher, which is where you can see inventory gradually climbed over the year, over the previous years in 2018, as the market slowed with more expensive money in 2018. Remember, if you're testing the hypothesis that rising rates will be maybe the pinprick that bursts a housing bubble, this chart helps explain why we think that is very unlikely. The important point is that existing homeowners are locked locked into their 3% or lower mortgage. Rising rates don't impact their loans, don't make their loans worse. If anything, those, those loans feel more precious to hold on to. So you sell your house less frequently and you certainly don't let a property go into foreclosure. So rising rates don't create a flood of new inventory by any stretch. Rising rates could cool buyer demand a touch. But even here, new buyers are driven more by demographics than by rates per se. So maybe a touch more inventory comes from decreased buyer demand at affordability metrics. Uh, the third area, though, is with investors. And this is the main driver for, for inventory increases that we might see later this year. So Americans have moved 8 million homes from resale into rental investment properties over the last decade. Each year, they do more and more. Uh, one way you do that is by doubling up. So you, you're ready to upsize or downsize your existing home and you keep the first one for the investment property as you move into the second one. 
when rates are 3%, that's very affordable to, to keep both houses. When they're 4.5%, that starts to be less attractive. So fewer people do that doubling up trade, and they list their house for sale. So inventory can climb a little bit. Uh, we can see that's exactly what happened in 2018. 2018 is the only year in the decade when inventory investors didn't remove inventory uh, and turn it into investment property. We had a slight increase in inventory year over year. So this is how our 22, 2022 model might look with steadily rising rates. The back end of the year has inventory increases compared to last year. Uh, but there are no signals for major inventory shift. If down the road, the cost of money is far higher and we stall from this massive economic growth that we're currently in to maybe a recession, then you could imagine how some of those rental deals start to look even less attractive and therefore we need to unload investment properties and there would add further to inventory. But those, those trends are a year or more off at the earliest. There's plenty to happen between now and then. On to prices. The median home price uh, each week inches closer to a new record of $400,000. The price of the new listings is just $1 shy this week at $399,999. There's always a cluster of uh, properties just below the big threshold. So the median hits this plateau. While at so it seems like next week the median home price in the U.S. will be three ninety nine nine ninety nine, uh, and somewhere in the following weeks we will set uh, a new record home price in the U.S. Uh, this week, two years ago, is the last week before the pandemic lockdowns hit the market. You can see in the dark red line here, there's a tiny dip, tiny five-week dip at the start of the pandemic. Prices adjusted down for just three weeks and then took two more weeks to climb above their previous highs. We started these videos back then on the assumption that the, mar the market would tank and we wanted people to know precisely what was happening as it happened. Uh, it turned out we were wildly wrong and the market launched on its major demand run. So it's interesting to note at the time that the economic stimulus that eventually came was totally unknown. So this demand in April and May of last year was not driven by like, you know, the helicopter fed money dumping in. This, these were buyers buying at the exact time the economy was plunging into deep recession with millions of jobs lost. So this was not a stimulus-based burst at the beginning. It was, it was despite the major economic halt. I think about this when I consider what might be the fate of the housing market if next year or the following year, our incredible job market and wage gains that we've been having finally slow down, maybe tip into recession. And is it possible that housing, because of the strong demographics we're in, is counter cyclical to the business cycle this time around? Wouldn't that be surprising? So we'll see. But the interesting thing to note is that the, market, the housing market was surging strong when the pandemic recession, at the same time as it kicked in, it surged before any stimulus happened, before any stimulus was certain at all. Okay, demand-wise, our immediate sales tracker is staying strong. 31% of the new listings went into contract essentially immediately this week, 81,000 Single-family homes at the market, 25,000 of those get offers and into pending contract before the week is out. Uh, remember, we, we're watching here for the, the light portion of the bar to shrink in proportion to the dark red portion. The dark reds are the ones that get listed and then need more than a week to sell. Those add to active inventory. The light red do not add to the active inventory. Slightly, We have slightly fewer... Uh, than last week, but but obviously we're trending up for the spring. Uh, new listings volume peaks at the end of June. So we like to snow to melt, school to end, but 
you know, I can imagine that if you are in advising sellers right now, they could be facing more competition, slightly more competition later in the year. Uh, so if you follow our inventory model, so earlier seems more likely to be better than delaying later in the year. Just something to think about with your sellers right now, especially if they think rates are going to be climbing. Okay, finally today, a quick check on uh, market time. We're down to 28 days on market median for, for all homes across the country. That's all homes, all price points. Uh, there are very few that have sat around for, for a long time, even though the wacky ones that usually take, you know, six, eight, 12 months or more to sell, they've moved. And so we're left with only the fast turnover. The market time will continue to accelerate for a couple more months. Uh, as we cross into that, you know, peak, and then later, late summer is when market time starts climbing again. Normally, mid mid March, though, normally, normally pre 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 pandemic times, uh, we might expect, you know, two and a half months, ten weeks, eleven weeks. Right now, twenty eight days. So no signs of slowing there at all yet. That's still going to keep uh, accelerating for the next uh, several weeks, couple months at least, and then uh, before it slows down for late in the summer. Okay, that's all the data we have time for this week. Stay tuned to the YouTube channel for the latest each week. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we have a new Top of Mind podcast this week, diving into the, the latest technology changes around the transaction in real estate and what that means for buyers and sellers over the next few years. We talk in this one about crypto, in real estate. So if you're interested in how Bitcoin and blockchain are actually impacting the real estate transactions right now, what's actually happening right now, tune into this one. That's it's some great insights, great conversation. That's Joe Curtis on the Top of Mind podcast. And uh, we'll link to that in the, uh, in the description below. As always, this market is nuts and your clients need to know what the heck's going on. So uh, if you need your clients to not be afraid, then get them some Altos data. So go to altosresearch.com right now, get your consultation for your local market, and get your data to your clients right now. All right, everybody. Thank you. More next week.